In today's video, we're going to walk through a complete beginner's guide to the powerful AI tool Midjourney. We'll be covering how to sign up to Midjourney and what plans to choose, how to structure your requests or prompts to get great images, the best ways to get more prompt ideas, including additional resources on the web, and lastly, we'll touch on passive income ideas using Midjourney. So let's begin. To start using Midjourney, you'll first need to register for a Discord account. Discord is essentially a chat room software where you have servers and channels within each server. Enter all the details, including your email and chosen username, to register your Discord account. You'll then need to head to the midjourney.com website and click join the beta. This will allow you to be invited to join the Midjourney Discord server. Once you complete the quick onboarding, you'll be in the Midjourney server. Once you're in the Midjourney Discord server, you'll see the left pane containing a number of channels. The channels that begin with the word newbies are newcomer channels, where new users can start safely testing out their requests to Midjourney. You'll also see the general channels, where more experienced users are submitting their requests. On the right, in the main body, you can see a history of users in the channel submitting their requests, along with their resulting outputs from Midjourney. All requests begin with forward slash imagine. If you're lucky, Midjourney may be offering a free trial. Otherwise, you'll need to subscribe to one of the paid plans. There are three plans currently available, where the primary difference is the number of available requests you can make as measured in computation time. The basic plan should be fine for most people to get started. There's also a 20% discount if you select the yearly billing. Subscribing to a paid plan also grants you a license to use the generated images however you wish, and allows you to make requests via direct messages with the Midjourney bot. To do this, ensure the member list is visible in the right pane, then right-click the Midjourney bot and click Message. Before we start submitting requests or prompts to Midjourney, let's first understand how to construct a prompt. I found it best to keep three things in mind. First, the elements of the image. Second, the style of the image. And lastly, third, the parameters for the image. Let's cover each. Starting with image elements. The first thing to consider is the subject, i.e. the animal, object, or scene you wish to depict. This could be an astronaut, or a table, or a mountain range, for example. Next, I like to think of a more detailed description for the subject. Is it a blue vase, or a pretty woman, or a snow-capped mountain? Including this in your prompt will give Midjourney more information as to what you wish to generate. If there's some action taking place in the image, that should also be mentioned, such as a bird flying across the sky, or cars racing against one another, or a character in the midst of a fight. Lastly, I'd also provide the location of the scene. Is our object resting on a desk? Is our character walking on a salt flat, or on an alien planet? If you really want to focus on only the subject without any background distractions, you can say, on a white background. This is particularly helpful for creating logos and designs. The second set of inputs are related to style, starting with the medium. By default, Midjourney will tend towards a realistic looking photo image, but you may want an illustration, graffiti, or a pencil sketch. Specified colors can also dramatically vary the output, from light pastels to vibrant electric colors. You can also provide more descriptive examples, such as day glow or acid green. Angle allows you to specify the camera's position relative to the object or scene. Style genres are also my favorite easy way to reference well-known artistic themes such as sci-fi, dada, expressionism, and so on. You can also specify an era of time to influence the output. Lastly, you can also provide an artist or filmmaker or painter and have Midjourney mimic the output in their style. The third set of inputs to consider are the parameters, which are specified by double dashes. Unlike the elements and styles, which can be provided and separated by commas, parameters need to start with the double dashes. Here are commonly used ones. Dash dash AR controls the aspect ratio of the output image, 32 for common cinema, 916 for tall Instagram stories. Dash dash no allows you to exclude elements from your image. For example, if you prompted a fruit bowl, you could exclude apples. Dash dash quality refers to the level of detail in the image. If over the default value of one, it will cost more GPU processing, but increase the level of detail in the image. Dash dash stylized values over the default 100 create more beautiful, complex, and arguably crazier designs. Values close to zero tend to create more simple and plain images. Dash dash chaos values control the level of variation between the initially provided four images from Midjourney. And lastly, dash dash tile is one of my favorite parameters, which ensures the output image can be tiled together to form a continuous repeating pattern, which is very useful when creating pattern prints and wallpapers. Now we know what to include in our prompts, let's try some prompt examples in our direct messages to the Midjourney bot. In these 10 prompt examples, I've highlighted the elements in green, the styles in orange, and the parameters in grey. For the first example, let's try slash imagine a lone astronaut staring into this night sky on an alien planet, hyperreal, vibrant, sci-fi, drone shot at 3, 2. And we'll see that Midjourney gives us four initial outputs. 
We can then choose to upscale any of these four outputs by pressing U1 to U4, and choose to create four new variations based on any of these four outputs by pressing V1 to V4. Let's first upscale the bottom left image by pressing U3, and there we have an upscaled version. Let's also create four new variations of the top left image, which had the large orange planet in the sky, by pressing V1, and there we have four new versions based on the first image. We can subsequently upscale the bottom right one by pressing U4. If we didn't like any of the four initially generated images, then we can press the refresh button to generate four new images based on that same prompt. For our second example, we're showing a watercolor pastel drawing of a vase on a mantelpiece. In this third example, we have a pink bag in the shape of a bucket, shot in a photo studio. We've also tried to increase the quality level to 2 on the right version to try and get additional detail. Our fourth example shows farm animals as cute kawaii cartoon stickers. We've also specified white background, as these are to be used as stickers. We also specified a high chaos value of 75 to ensure all four outputs are quite varied. Our fifth example is for a brochure cover with office workers entering their corporate office. Our sixth example is for a wacky logo for a tech company in synthwave colors. Here are two of my favorites for that example upscaled. For number seven, we have a child's room filled with wooden toys, messy and sunlight styling. For number eight, we have a photo of a square swimming pool surrounded by flowers. For number nine, we have a cybernetic soldier styled as from the future with lots of detail and ray trace lighting to show the light bouncing off the suit. I've also added the stylized parameter as 1000 to let Midjourney get really creative. And lastly, for example 10, we have a map of a fantasy land in a historical style printed on old parchment paper. Next, we're going to cover four ways to get inspired by other people's prompts. The first is to watch the prompts people enter in the various channels on the Discord server. Stick to the general channels for better prompts. The second is to search for existing submitted prompts in the Discord channel that contain elements or styles you're interested in. For example, logo, watercolor, children's book, or architecture. The third approach is to visit the community feed on midjourney.com and explore the top images and the associated prompts. Here you'll see all kinds of fascinating designs from the community in a variety of styles. The final approach is to check out the many websites dedicated to cataloging prompts and outputs. One of my favorites is midlibrary.io. Here you'll find many style references that can be included in your prompts, which have been grouped into different categories. These include style references for genres and arts movements, such as fashion eras, art nouveau, astrophotography, astropunk, cubism, cyberpunk, funk art, gothic architecture. Let's try incorporating some of these genre style references from midlibrary for the same prompt. If we start with a base prompt of a cat sitting at the piano, and then add four style references, you can see the drastically different changes in output. You can also find references to artistic techniques, such as graffiti, arabesque for patterns, tapestry, calligraphy, pen drawings, chalk, close-up portraits, lots of ideas here. Let's again try incorporating some mid-library artistic style references for the same prompt. Here we have a base prompt of a Komodo dragon next to a bonsai tree, where I've given no style references for the top left version, and then three other artistic style references to where you can see the new results. You also find references to fashion designers like Virgil Abloh, Pierre Cardin, Tom Ford, Marc Jacobs, Tommy Hilfiger. References to painters like Vincent van Gogh, filmmakers like Luc Besson, Wes Anderson, Clint Eastwood, Spike Lee, so plenty of style references to help with your prompts. Now that you have an understanding of how to generate images in Midjourney using excellent prompts, I want to cover a few ideas to use these to make passive income. The first idea is to create logos for businesses. These services can be marketed through Fiverr or Upwork. The second idea is to create cute stickers, which can be advertised and sold in marketplaces like Etsy. The third is to create patterns and wallpapers, which could also be sold on Etsy or designed on Fiverr. The fourth is to design t-shirts, which can be sold on many websites including Teespring, Redbubble, or Amazon's Merch On Demand program. The fifth idea is to design personalized invitations or sell invitation templates. The sixth idea is to create packs of digital art and sell these on marketplaces again like Etsy. I really appreciate you watching today's video. Subscribe and leave a comment if you'd like additional videos covering more prompt examples or how to incorporate ChatGPT or if you'd like us to cover some of the passive income ideas in more step-by-step -step detail.